I had no idea the British press was so bigoted. This one's wife, boozy, battered. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Those in the camp of the Duchess of Sussex have found themselves coming under increasing pressure as of late. This arises from the tsunami of support for the Princess of Wales and the events surrounding her cancer diagnosis, the conspiracy theories and bullying, the support that has been shown for her, all provides mainstream media with an opportunity to expose the cockroaches that are those that support this one's wife and highlighting them. This shows you a number of things about this one's wife. First of all, the type of people that she attracts, those members of the coterie, those lieutenants, individuals such as Christopher Boozy, who has various complaints about his behaviour, ranging for the suggestion that he has unlawfully disclosed data about a wide range of people, that he has engaged in actions for and on behalf of this one's wife, for the purposes of trying to bully people off social media, that there are suggestions that the spoutable, the new social media that he has created, isn't fit for purpose. There have been suggestions that he's been involved in scams in the past. And therefore, it is entertaining to find that this is the type of individual that supports this one's wife. You also only need to look at the odious Omid Scobie, and the lies that he peddles, and the way that he adheres to trying to wedge himself at the derriere of the Duchess of Sussex, whilst roundly being called out for lying about his age, for lying about travelling on private jets, for his behaviour around providing a document that contained the names of King Charles and the Princess of Wales as the royal racist, and then seeking to throw the translator under the bus by saying that the translator added this information in and that he didn't supply the information. An odious individual, a self-serving, cowardly lickspittle. Furthermore, with Scobie, he repeatedly acts as the mouthpiece of the Sussexes despite denying that he is their friend and such a mouthpiece. A hypocrite, a contrarian, and a liar. What a great friend to have. Then you have Dr Shouty Shola, who regularly pops up on social media and sometimes on mainstream media, shouting over people, coming out with her prejudiced and bigoted agendas. Again, a supporter of this one's wife, and what a marvellous supporter to have. It starts to paint a picture, doesn't it, of the crazed individuals that support her. Furthermore, not only does it demonstrate the type of individuals that she attracts, it also is demonstrative of the fact that she never speaks out to silence them, never speaks out to contradict them. She simply basks in their support and adoration, no matter how toxic those behaviours are. Nevertheless, these individuals have come crashing up against the wall of support that has emerged for the Princess of Wales and has given mainstream media an opportunity to expose the nature of those that are the ardent supporters of this one's wife and thus, by extension, taint her. Naturally, this one's wife will not accept such tainting. Her narcissism will cause her to compartmentalise, suggesting that this is the behaviour of those individuals going off on a frolic of their own, that they're not instructed by her. But we can see that as a consequence of the closeness of the information and behaviours that exist, that they are very much individuals that are endorsed, albeit not publicly, by this one's wife. This time, Christopher Boozy finds himself in the firing line, courtesy of the Daily Mail and an article from Tom Leonard. The headline reads, Vile Kate Spiracy Trolls, Shameless Scheme, After Bankruptcy and Flailing Tech Ventures, is Sussex cheerleader Christopher Boozy, hoping his relentless slurs about cancer hit Kate will finally make him a Silicon Valley king? Well, it looks like he's in for a bit of a battering from the Daily Mail that's going to cut him off at the legs. Tech entrepreneur Christopher Boozy launched his software tool Bot Sentinel in 2018 to 
help people identify inauthentic social media accounts and toxic trolls. In case he's still on the hunt for the latter, he might want to look in the mirror. For in the interest of his company's online plea for financial donations to help us combat online harassment and disinformation, his own recent social media outpourings over the dark conspiracies swirling online about the royal family certainly count as disinformation. As for online harassment, how about endlessly commenting on the Princess of Wales's changing weight, accusing her of lying when she said she badly photoshopped that Mother's Day image with her children, and even seemingly attacking her Friday video announcement, revealing her cancer diagnosis as akin to North Korean propaganda. This is the same woman that he once said on X was aging as fast as a banana and married to a man who looked like a balding Muppet. Indeed, there's a deep irony in the fact that the notorious combative Boozy is a self-proclaimed expert on social media, monitoring and the evils of online misbehaviour. In fact, one might wonder whether, after appearing on the Sussex's infamous 2022 Netflix documentary to complain that this one's wife was the target of hatred, he might now be suffering from a serious case of double standards when it comes to the Princess of Wales. Boozy, whose latest digital venture is a little-used Twitter alternative called Spoutable, has been backpedalling desperately in recent days following Kate's cancer announcement. Backpedalling, mind, but not apologising. Celebrities and commentators ranging from actress Blake Lively to left-wing UK Guardian columnist Orin Jones, who mocked the princess in the days before her announcement, have done the right thing and issued apologies. But not Boozy. He insists he has nothing to apologise for because he claims he hasn't done anything wrong by Kate. Boozy believes he's doing us all a service, uncovering a devious establishment conspiracy he alleges has been cucked up by the palace and the media to conceal the fact that Kate has not been seen in public for months. In a long social media message on Sunday, Boozy said that he knows what it is like to watch a loved one battling cancer, having seen his mother succumb to the disease during Covid. I definitely would not come out and troll someone who is battling cancer, he said. All of my tweets and spouts and comments have been about the British press and the palace's communication team. In his righteous indignation at the Sussex's two greatest enemies, he must have forgotten that, in the hours after Kate's cancer announcement, he wrote that Prince William threw his wife under the bus and failed to give her moral support. For the record, he believes all the recent photos and videos of the princess, apart from the cancer announcement, have been faked for nefarious reasons that aren't quite clear. His current fixation, which he tweets about incessantly, appears to be the footage from early last week of Kate and William walking outside a Windsor Farm shop. Like all crazed conspiracists, there is no convincing boozy of the footage's veracity, even though the man who filmed it on his mobile phone has spoken publicly. The visit to the farm was staged, and the person in the video wasn't Kate. Boozy tweeted only yesterday. In another post, Boozy replied to an excerpt of a recorded BBC News panel discussion from Sunday featuring Victoria Newton, the editor of the Sun newspaper, which first ran the Windsor Farm shop footage. In the clip, Newton says that the royal couple must have known that if they went out and mingled with the public, someone would likely spot and photograph them on a phone. When a passerby did exactly that, she added, the newspaper sought the approval of the palace before publishing. That said Boozy, was proof positive that the farm walk was staged. It was left to wiser minds to point out that Newton had reeled nothing of the sort. There are plenty more like-minded crackpots swirling around the social media cesspools, trotting out the same claptrap as Boozy, and even going further, cold-bloodedly suggesting Kate's announcement, video was AI-generated. But they don't have anything like Boozy's reach. He has nearly 358,000 followers on X, nor since his Harry and this one's wife endorsed Netflix docuseries appearance, do they have his name recognition? Boozy is, of course, entitled to spout whatever torturously constructed hypotheses he likes, even if his endless capacity to contradict himself would make the most swivel-eyed conspiracy theorists blush. 
but his simultaneous claims of his empathy for the princess, even as he continues to unkindly portray her as some sort of hapless puppet of sinister forces, are starting to wear a little thin. Boozy is a man who has built a career on being relentlessly controversial, frequently posting online about the latest hot-button issues. A 2023 Wired profile claimed Boozy is defined by his inability to stay above the fray. Though he's often warm and witty in conversation, he turns pugnacious when alone behind a keyboard. It went on, his penchant for escalating online beefs with surly characters has caused him to become enmeshed in almost too many feuds to track. And, as he struggles to build up interest in Spoutable, one of many Twitter alternatives that are in danger of sinking without trace, stirring up controversy, particularly about the royal family, has proved a valuable calling card when it comes to getting noticed. The 48-year-old computer programmer has described how he came from humble beginnings, brought up in one of Brooklyn's poorest neighbourhoods by his mother, grandmother and aunt. Age nine, he says his mother gave him a Mattel Aquarius computer to keep him out of trouble, and he became hooked on computing. After working for the IT department of the New York City Department of Education, he started a one-man software company in 2000. He later moved into cryptocurrencies, where, as a contributor to the online forum Bitcoin Talk, he was accused of using bots and false online identities to heavily inflate the value of coins he'd bought, as well as allegedly promising customers assets that he never provided. Boozy dismissed the claims as misinformation and disinformation, and no legal action was forthcoming. However, trouble followed him in his other ventures. In 2018, after he set up Bot Sentinel, a crowdfunded and supposedly apolitical software tool that tracks coordinated disinformation and harassment campaigns on Twitter, critics soon accused Boozy of race baiting and using the tool to pursue his own woke agenda, having his algorithms only flag up what he personally found offensive. In 2021, Bot Sentinel garnered considerable publicity when it investigated the source of online slurs aimed at the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, concluding that 70% of the hate content targeting the couple came from just 83 Twitter accounts. Boozy claimed there was no obvious motive for this supposed coordinated anti-this-one's-wife campaign, but suggested it was racism. He repeated those claims in the couple's Netflix documentary the following year. Also in 2022, Bot Sentinel said it had discovered Twitter trolls had engaged in rampant abuse and widespread targeted harassment of women who voiced support online for actress Amber Heard. Boozy's company was subsequently hired by Heard's lawyers in her defamation court case, which she lost with Johnny Depp. But in the December of 2022, Boozy was sued by a New York lawyer, Nathaniel Broughty, with a popular YouTube channel who claimed he'd been falsely accused of being disruptive by Bot Sentinel, simply because he had criticised Heard's legal position at trial. Boozy had also tweeted that Broughty was not a bona fide a lawyer, wildly claiming that he had planted evidence on suspects in his previous police career. A judge dismissed the case. Last year, Boozy's credibility took yet another hit, when research by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology found that bot detection tools, including Bot Sentinel, actually do a pretty poor job, as they rely on flawed data. Little known before he was picked up by Team Sussex, he's hardly a king of Silicon Valley. He lives in a workaday town in New Jersey with his wife and son. He also has a daughter. In 2019, he filed for bankruptcy and became embroiled in legal battle with his landlord over unpaid rent. When it comes to the royal family, Boozy seems to particularly revel in making personal remarks about the appearance and age of the Waleses, once writing, I'm sorry, but William and Kate look like Harry's aunt and uncle. However, according to Boozy, while attacks on the Duchess of Sussex are never okay, and always rooted in racism, attacks on the Waleses, and particularly Kate, are seemingly fair game. After this one's wife was labelled a narcissist in an article by Politico in late 2022, Boozy charged to her defence. A woman of colour protecting her family and defending herself isn't narcissism, it's survival, he roared. Her only offence, he said, was having defended herself while being black. Shortly after the death of the late Queen, Boozy criticised people who, with no apparent evidence, he claimed were trying to portray this one's wife as some sort of, some sort of harlot. He added, all this one's wife did was marry the man she loves while being black, just stop. As Boozy continues to revel in his notoriety, he will no doubt flag up this article, as he does with many others of proof of his importance. One wonders if he will ever accept that the Princess of Wales deserves to deal with her health crisis in peace. Thus, an ardent supporter of this one's wife 
is exposed for his various failings and behaviours, demonstrating that he is a contrarian, a hypocrite, an individual who believes that he has empathy but clearly has none. An individual that revels in provoking people and receiving a response there too. An individual who acts without a sense of accountability, but with a rampant sense of entitlement, believing that he is allowed to dictate what appears online, and that if you don't agree with what he states, then you must be a hater. A considerable hit piece on Boozy which is demonstrating once again the company that this one's wife keeps and showing her in a particular light, but also demonstrating how mainstream media is now deeming that these individuals who are the supporters of this one's wife are fair game themselves for exposure, suggesting that perhaps the tide has turned and that the pressure is now going to be increased upon this one's wife. Something, of course, which, as you know, will amount to a huge threat to her control. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.